October 1st, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Psalms chapters 109 and 110 from the Old Testament. O God, whom I praise, do not ignore me, for they say cruel and deceptive things to me, they lie to me, they surround me and say hateful things, they attack me for no reason, they repay my love with accusations, but I continue to pray, they repay me evil for good and hate for love. Appoint an evil man to testify against him. May an accuser stand at his right side. When he is judged, he will be found guilty. Then his prayer will be regarded as sinful. May his days be few. May another take his job. May his children be fatherless and his wife a widow. May his children roam around begging, asking for handouts as they leave their ruined home. May the creditor seize all he owns. May strangers loot his property. May no one show him kindness. May no one have compassion on his fatherless children. May his descendants be cut off. May the memory of them be wiped out by the time the next generation arrives. May his ancestors' sins be remembered by the Lord. May his mother's sin not be forgotten. May the Lord be constantly aware of them and cut off the memory of his children from the earth. For he never bothered to show kindness. He harassed the oppressed and needy and killed the disheartened. He loved to curse others, so those curses have come upon him. He had no desire to bless anyone, so he has experienced no blessings. He made cursing a way of life, so curses poured into his stomach like water and seeped into his bones like oil. May a curse attach itself to him like a garment one puts on or a belt one wears continually. May the Lord repay my accusers in this way. Those who say evil things about me. O sovereign Lord, intervene on my behalf for the sake of your reputation. Because your loyal love is good, deliver me. For I am oppressed and needy and my heart beats violently within me. I am fading away like a shadow at the end of the day. I am shaken off like a locust. I am so starved my knees shake I have turned into skin and bones. I am disdained by them. When they see me, they shake their heads. Help me, O Lord my God, because you are faithful to me, deliver me. Then they will realize this is your work and that you, Lord, have accomplished it. They curse, but you will bless. When they attack, they will be humiliated, but your servant will rejoice. My accusers will be covered with shame and draped in humiliation as if it were a robe. I will thank the Lord profusely in the middle of a crowd. I will praise him because he stands at the right hand of the needy to deliver him from those who threaten his life. Here is the Lord's proclamation to my Lord. Sit down at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord extends your dominion from Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemies. Your people willingly follow you when you go into battle. On the holy hills at sunrise, the dew of your youth belongs to you. The Lord makes this promise on oath and will not revoke it. You are an eternal priest after the pattern of Melchizedek. O sovereign Lord, at your right hand, he strikes down kings in the day he unleashes his anger. He executes judgment against the nations. He fills the valleys with corpses. He shatters their heads over the vast battlefield. From the stream along the road he drinks, then he lifts up his head. God, there's a lot of non-Christians, and I would suspect a few Christians, who really struggle with Psalm 109 and just how harsh it sounds. Um, very reminiscent of Psalm 69, but in Psalm 69, the person kind of says, I kind of did something wrong to have all this happen. I'm, I'm also wrong. <laughs> in this one, uh, the, the person, the singer, uh, is innocent and is under heavy, heavy persecution and is asking you to do all sorts of things to his persecutor and the persecutor's family. And people struggle with this because it comes across as really mean. We're so used to the um, turn the other cheek type of Christianity and love everyone um, that sometimes I think we forget that we serve you as a trinity. God, 
as our true God, your son Jesus Christ who died for our sins and the Holy Spirit who leads and guides us. Um, and I think people forget that you're part of the equation, that you are sovereign over everything. And so this person isn't on some vindictive rant like so many of us would have been uh, for himself. He's saying, I know you have the power of God to do all of these things. I know you can take out all of these people and I know you can take them out in these ways. And I also know that when you do, it will glorify you because it will show just how powerful you are. And I think modern day Christians forget that. We have so much technology and, and uh, computer graphic imagery things that make what would be considered miracles in the past seem very common day nowadays. So I'm not sure what it would take to surprise anybody. But we know that you were fully capable of doing everything this person called you to do. And on top of it, what was amazing is the trust from the singer of the psalm. God, I know you can do all these things. I know this person persecuting me can be persecuted by you. I know that you can take them down. I know you can take care of them. I know you can um, take care of the sin and the, the discipline and um, consequence that's going to come from it. I know you can do all those things. I think a lot of people kind of brush underneath the Christian rugs how strong and powerful you truly are and how your anger should be fully upon all of us for being sinners. And for those of us who are Christian, the only thing that's stopping your anger from uh, reaching us is your son, Jesus Christ. And the incredible sacrifice he made for all of us by taking on all of our sins from the past and current and from the future for that forgiveness so that you could see us as pure and white. And so you wouldn't come after us like this person saying, go after this person in this way. I think as Christians, we kind of like to sweep that under the rug that there really is a God that's that powerful for going after people and nations and, and whole worlds. I know a lot of people still don't believe the, the writings of what will happen at the end of the world and how traumatic it will be unlike anything we've ever experienced. People don't like it when there's negativity or bad stuff. Everybody wants to partic participate in a religion that's all feel good. Well, that's not what you're about, and that's never <laughs> what you've been about. You've been about love and grace and mercy, but you've also been pretty clear that if people are disobedient, sorry, but they have to deal with the consequences. You know, it's interesting. People forget that when Jesus hung on the cross, he asked you for something. He asked you to forgive the soldiers who knew not what they were doing. There was no plea for him from him, sorry, on the cross for Judah, for Pontius Pilate, for all the leaders that persecuted him or um, who were wishy-washy about uh, the laws at that time and what they could and couldn't do and, and worried more about the people than the Son of God that was standing right before them. There was no plea for mercy or grace on the cross from your son. And I think people forget that. So you are a God of vengeance. You are a God of anger. You are a God of consequences. And we have to realize that the totality of that goes right along with you are my father who loves me greatly and is kind and compassionate to me and wants what is best for me. God, I know as humans, it's a little bit hard for us to make all of that smush together. And I know you're, you're slowly teaching me what that actually looks like. But I am so thankful that I serve a God that is that big. That can encompass such a range of power. From intimately holding my hand as I go through problems in my life. To taking care of the cosmos. To dealing with sin of a whole nation. God, thank you for being such a powerful God. In your son's name I pray, amen.